A year ago, we beta tested Starlink, a high speed internet solution from Elon Musk's SpaceX satellites. But after consistent dropouts, we boxed it up and returned it. Since then, more than a thousand satellites have been launched, there's a new dish model, and most importantly, it's no longer in beta. So head back to the in laws where the sealed road turns to dirt and we'll give Starlink a second chance. G'day, I'm Cam, and if you're like me, slow internet's a real kick in the guts, especially for video streaming or day 100 gig game patches, like whatever happened to finishing a game before you sell it. Anyway, these days we expect to have high speed internet, especially for working from home. However, if you take a hop, skip and a jump outside of a major Australian city, you'll find this is not the case. So instead of fixing the degraded copper in the ground, Australia has turned to space for a solution. For the past few years, my in-laws have been using the SkyMaster network from SkyMesh. This gives speeds of about 25 megabits per second and a ping of 600 milliseconds. Starlink, however, gives speeds of around 100 megabits per second with a ping around 40 milliseconds. So a SkyMesh satellite is 36,000 kilometers away from Earth, whereas a Starlink satellite is only 550 kilometers away from Earth. Now that reduction in distance reduces the latency in communication. Now with the SkyMesh being in geostationary, it's always staying in the one spot, giving us that link. But with Starlink, since it's in low Earth orbit and it's constantly moving, there's going to be points when one satellite gives us a connection and then points when it doesn't. And that's why we have like 3,000 of these things constantly flying around to ensure that one is over top of us at a given time. In the Starlink app, you don't even need to have a dish yet to use their free sky scanner. And this allows you to figure out optimal placement at your location. Around there, yeah. Interestingly, they have removed the LAN port that was on the original model. It's now an optional extra, and you can buy up to 12 Wi Fi mesh nodes to extend Wi Fi coverage throughout your home. However, if you prefer to use your existing networking hardware, you can always toggle the router into bridge mode. You know the problem is with this bloke? I know him, right? He's talking to me, but I haven't got, oh, now I know what he's saying. <laughs> the rest of it, I Until this bit, I haven't got a clue. Yeah, that's it. He's like talking another language. It's super hot. Cool, it works. Look how clear that is. Oh, it's moving. It's three. What am I doing up here? With satellite internet, your data is being relayed by a satellite to a ground station, and the ground station is the one with a high speed wide internet to the rest of the world. Now, my presumption from beta testing was the dropouts were caused when we were switching between the different satellites providing this link. But I'm pleased to report that after two months, this time Starlink has been exceptionally reliable. And we're getting speeds of at least 100 megabits per second through the included Wi Fi 5 AC router. Pete chose them out the dish next to the old one, so once it's been collected, we could place Starlink on a pole, allowing it to easily clear the trees or antennas on the roof. But in all honesty, the in-laws aren't really faced, as the minimal obstructions cause a show to buffer for maybe half a second, once a night. But what if you live in the middle of Whoop Whoop and there's no ground station near you? Well, good news. They're testing out these space lasers, which allow an optical laser link between multiple Starlink satellites. I've read someone's currently beta testing in Alice Springs at the moment, which is in the middle of Australia. There's no ground stations around. So their house's dish is going up to a satellite. The satellite's talking to a separate satellite, then down into a ground station. They can actually daisy chain multiple satellites through this laser link. So that tech's like incredible. That's going to unlock worldwide high speed internet connection to just anywhere. You could be on a boat in the middle of the ocean. High speed internet. This stuff is like seriously cool. And it's this worldwide high speed internet that's super powerful. Cause like right now, the in-laws, they're only 10 minutes drive from my place. And I have the highest speed wide connection you can get in Australia, fiber to the premise. And here, 10 minutes away, we can't even get nothing. The phone line's useless. Think about all the regional and rural towns where like kids are going to school, they don't even have access to internet. This is gonna be like game changing. As for pricing though, it's also incredibly 
cheap in comparison to some of the services out there. So the SkyMesh they were paying $199.95 for, and that's the best the Australian NBN network had to offer. As for Starlink Residential, there's a once-off payment for the dish that you chuck on the roof. Currently it's 450 bucks in Australia, down from 924. The plan is then $139 per month, and that includes unlimited data. And so if where you live has no wired high-speed option, definitely check out Starlink. There is a bit of a wait list, so you might need to jump on and wait a little bit. There is a maximum amount of houses that can be serviced in an area too. So don't sleep on this. If it's something that you need, definitely try it out now. There is a 30 day money back guarantee. I've already taken advantage of that. They definitely do let you return it for free. Uh, and yeah, that's it. If you liked this video, thumbs it. If you loved it, sub it. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.